and still they spoke no words throughout this year, and scarce were they apart in those happy days, suffering no worldly words to interfere, nor any fear that either be borne away to smirch in any way their long-denied cheer. All their lives, perhaps, might they have had their way, but fate had plans for the lovers, that was clear. They took to venturing through their new domain, finding shallow caves, deep hollows and streams with natural bounty stretched out every way. They wandered where they would, and mutely deemed the woods were theirs, and whatever they fain do within their realm was their right. They were free. Those who followed me will the same ere they died, conjuring courage and spectacle and rage in the face of the void. Not a one did hide, and we fought so boldly, just to be caged in hollowness and servitude, to vie against all things. Tis so for you, and still the same for this mutant boy you drove to suicide. Our once human, now Velamahan children, helped the Second Empire to grow swiftly. Their kind is... faster. Faster to grow and learn. Faster to work for our reborn destiny. And on that point, let's speak the present day. Of our first conquest in this new stretch of space, the Malathanrin, who thought to bar our way, are bested and consigned to their proper place. The wrath of winter slackens not for spring. Snow falls unceasing to blanket and bleakness, Fimble winter, Ragnarok heralding, Foisting despair and fostering weakness. Yet ere all fortitude falls to the freeze, A traveller tackles the treacherous tracks, Her high hope, a hailed heroine to be, And answers a call to halt winter's attack. At once peril pursues her, The two pates and half-brain between them of Thrivaldi, chief of trolls, who watches unsubtle and waits for the moment for malice to be meet. Lastly steps forth their captain with a proud stride. Human cheer and demon humour in her eyes, clad in steel and style of crimson blood and flame, a tiefling warrior adorned with fame, Charybdis she is named. Cold, sore, starved and thirsty, they do not tarry, but make haste through emptied streets and alleys, to the golden galley, most beloved of inns. Feasting, ale, music, rest, all lay within, as well as Archibald's famous home-brewed gin. His patience nears its end when he walks into a flint-speckled bed. Where on earth was he? Or was that under earth? And where was Ellie? Just then he sees a glow afar which lends some calm back. He wends his way to it, slowly. For dreadful moments Ellie stares, mouth clenched shut, still and silent. Will fights not to speak, not babble, nor seem too forceful, nor too meek. He feels weak, like a day's vigour was spent in moments, and each trice now feels like weeks.